class so let us continue straight away page number 29 yes in the last class we have discussed until uh, effects of rotation now let us start tides okay before i go on to the tides something in this figures the figures that is there in your textbook that's you talk about figure 3.1 3.2 3.4, 3.3 not required, 3.4, 3.5, 3.6. So you need to practice all these figures, okay? Your diagram, whatever you call it in your language, that's that is included, okay? And that is also a part of your learning. You may not practice and later on if you get some questions, you may be like uh, kind of a shock, like from that you were not told. So do practice these figures and what are these figures? What is the name of this figure or what is the name of this diagram? What is it uh, telling us? It's all written in below. You see, for example, figure 3.1 talks about motions of the earth. Figure 3.2 tells us about rotation of the earth, right? Like that, see, just below the figure it's written. So let us start with tides. Tides are another effect of earth's rotation. If one lives near the sea cause, the rise and fall in water level at different times of the day is visible. When the moon is directly overhead, its gravitational force pulls the water in the oceans and causes water to rise. Underline. When the moon is directly overhead, its gravitational force pulls the water in the ocean and causes water to rise. This is called high tide. When the moon is furthest from the earth, the water level recedes and this is called low tide. This movement happens twice a year. So underline that as well. So basically tide. The reason why tides have, you know, takes place is because of the Earth's rotation. It is one of the, you can say, result of Earth's rotation because of which tides have takes place. And this high tide and low tide is mainly because of moon as it's clearly self-explanatory that when the moon is directly ever over our head so the, the gravitational force okay it pulls the water into the ocean and the level of water rises which causes the water to rise so we say that's high tide and when the moon is at a distance okay uh, from the earth then the level of water goes down which is called low tide and this takes place twice daily next we have revolution the movement of the earth around the sun is called revolution, underline that. The period taken by the earth to complete one revolution is called a year, underline that as well. What do you mean by year? Define a year. We all know January to December one year, but why? Why is that called one year? Why January to December is called one year? It's because that is the time actually taken by the earth to complete one complete round, one complete revolution. One revolution is made up of 365 days, 6 hours, 9 minutes and 9.54 seconds. <coughs> Unline that because that's mentioned in a very precise manner, detail. We just know in general approximately we say that 365 days. But it is 365 days, 6 hours, 9 minutes, 9.54 seconds. Usually, or oh, the same thing is written in the next paragraph as well. Usually we consider the period of one year to be 365 days. The extra six hours in four successive years are added together that amount to one day. So after four years, we get a year with 366 days instead of 365 days. All right. So that six hours, that six hour, nine minutes, 9.54 seconds, nine minutes and 9.54 seconds is not taken into consideration as the book says it's a, they have just talked about the extra six hours so the extra six hours in the four successive years is compiled together as six fours are 24 uh, which means one additional day and an additional day is added after four year and which we term it as a leap year and we have 366 days in a leap year so i hope you understood the reason that why do we have leap year after four successive years why there is one additional day it is because of this Next we have uh, <clears throat> effects of revolution. One of the major effects of revolution is seasons. In general there are four seasons that is spring, summer, autumn and winter. As the earth orbits around the sun, its axis always remains tilted at 23 half degree in the orbital part. Underline that. 
the axis always remains tilted tilted at 23 half degree this means that as the earth revolves the northern hemisphere faces the sun for half of the year and tilts away from it for another half it also means that different locations of the earth face the sun at various times of the year this constant inclination of earth on its axis combined with the revolution of the earth causes different seasons this paragraph is important for you what causes the different seasons on earth let me explain this first so basically it's the tilting position of the earth okay on its axis because of which we have this different seasons now the earth this <coughs> as the earth revolves the northern northern is on top northern hemisphere southern down as the northern hemisphere they face the sun for half of the years because it you know and the other half it tilts away from it now which means that the different places of the earth faces the sun at various locate at various different times of the year now since there is a constant inclination of the earth on its axis inclination okay slanty bending on its axis and along with its uh, the revolution which is you know constantly happening that's the reason that we have different seasons when the northern hemisphere faces the sun it receives direct sun rays so it is summer in the northern hemisphere and winter in the southern hemisphere on the other hand when the southern hemisphere tilts towards the sun it gets direct sun rays so it is summer on the southern hemisphere and in the winter on the northern hemisphere the earth orbits the sun in an oval or elliptical path so the distance between the earth and the sun varies during the revolution the best explanation a uh, pictorial represent what it is being written here is in figure 3.4 just look at the image out there to have a protaxis the dark portion that's the shadow okay and the brighter area where the sun rays are there so that is how the earth's revolution you can say causes seasons oh we are almost uh, done with the chapter not much is left tides revolution effects of revolution all right we will keep it up to this much for the day market go to your exercise page number 32 assignment for the day fill in the blanks number 4 let me also mark complete the sentence number 7 Answer the following question in brief number 3 and 4 2 not required that hasn't been explained yet Answer the following question in detail Question number 3 and uh, question number 4 All right this is this is the assignment for today I repeat Fill in the blanks number four. Complete the sentence number seven. Only one one. Answer the following question in brief. Small answer question. That's question number three and four. And answer the following question in detail. Question number three and four. All right. See you in the next class. Please read the text properly and uh, attend the class. God bless you all.